absolutely love macarons. Now imagine ice cream sandwiched between them. Zakia Mita is a patisserie chef who makes divine ice cream macarons imaginable. So it didn't take too much arm twisting to persuade me to track her down in Durban. If you're a calorie counter, close your eyes because Zakia Mita has created a sublime new range of temptation and flavors that beg to be sampled. Bubblegum, chocolate mint. Zakia, you are an absolute genius. What inspired the ice cream macaron? I actually saw it online and I really wanted to taste it, so I absolutely had to make it and try it for myself. I loved it and I think everyone else did too. From the time I launched it, it's been really popular and it's grown really, really well. What was it about this French treat that captured your heart? I think they're so perfect. The crispy outer shell, the chewy inside and the almond flavour just comes through so beautifully in the macaron. It tastes amazing. Don't you sometimes just want to pinch yourself because you're living your dream? It is still very unbelievable when I think of how far I've come since the beginning. So yes, I do have to pinch myself. Before we get to the best part of tasting, can you show me how they're made? Yes, definitely. Let's go. These funky confections are the product of Zakia's talents and training in the art of French pastry baking combined with a mastery of handmade ice cream making, not to mention a flair for flavour. This is the perfect thing to be doing with you because I love baking but my macarons are always a fabulous flop. What is the secret to making? I think it's precision. Weighing all your ingredients being very precise about what you're putting in, your utensils need to be completely dry and your oven temperature is very important. Where do we start? So we're going to put 60 grams of egg white into the mixer. You're going to start off with the meringue. You always want to start off on a low speed for it to start mixing and then go higher as you go along. The best bowl to make a meringue is in a copper bowl. A copper bowl? Yes, because of the chemicals in the copper that helps the meringue stabilise. We're going to add in 75 grams of caster sugar. We're going to gradually add it into the side of the bowl that has already been sifted. This is going to keep beating until it forms a stiff meringue. It needs to reach a point where you can hold it over your head without it falling down. Okay, and I think we're done. So you're going to put it over your head to check if it falls. So either we have a, a perfect meringue or I'm going to have my hair conditioned. Okay. <laughs> and that's how we okay, know it's okay, ready. Okay, perfect. And we're going to go over here. We're now going to add in the 100 grams of icing sugar and 75 grams of almond flour. It has been mixed already. We're just going to sift it. Please, can I sift it? Yes, sure. So we're going to add this in in three batches. Okay. And then we're going to add some green gel colour to the meringue. How are you going to fold this in? That's called the macronage. So you're going to fold in gently because okay. you don't want the air to be deflated. Okay. This recipe is quite good. I haven't had any issues with it and I think it works well in the Durban climate. And you know it's ready when you lift it up and it falls back into itself in 10 seconds. Okay. Did you see that? Like lava. Yes. So what's next in this tricky minefield of baking? We're going to pop this into the piping bag. Can you okay. pass that yeah. down, please? Thank you so much. And then we're going to pipe them. Where does the pistachio go? That goes into the chocolate ganache. So we're going to put the tray here. The normal baking tray that I just put upside down because I prefer the airflow when it's upside down. This is a silicone macaron mat. You can actually use baking paper as well. But just draw your circles on the underside, turn it over, and it just basically gives you the circles. Ah. So you're going to pipe straight down and a little circle like that. You are going to bang the tray so it does spread a bit. So we're just going to bang it through and you can see the air bubbles popping up. We'll just take a toothpick and poke them out. At this point, you would let it set for 15 to 20 minutes so it forms the skin over. Then you would put it into the oven for 24 minutes at 140 degrees. But I have one already made. Okay, and there we go. These look amazing. So we're going to leave these to cool, pair them up and then we're going to make our ganache. In the meantime, we're going to mix our pistachios okay. into our chocolate ganache. Okay, did you just chuck it in? Yes, perfect. Then you can give it a mix. We're going to put the ganache into a piping bag and then we're going to fill these up. Macarons actually started off as just one cookie. In World War II, they would serve it to the soldiers like this. Later on, Lodere started sandwiching it with a filling and a ganache in the middle. That's amazing. If you can just pass me the piping sure. bag there. I'm just going to put this in. Yeah, there we go. So this is basically your chocolate ganache mixed with pistachios. 
to make a pistachio ganache. We're just going to pipe these in in the same way we piped the macarons, straight down, and just give it a little twist. And then how do you store these when you're finished making them? So you'd store it at the bottom shelf of your fridge. It needs to be cool and it needs to actually soak in the flavours. So it normally needs to sit there for 24 hours before you would eat it. I'd like to try one before 24 hours. Ah, what a rebel. <laughs> I would love to. A little bit crispy. Well, these are such interesting flavours. What else are you experimenting with? Uh, well, the ice cream macarons have some exciting flavours as well. I can't wait for you to try them. Look, why are we wasting time? <laughs> Zakia has introduced some exciting Eastern elements to her range. This is the most exciting. What should I taste? Let me tell you the flavours. We've got Barfi, Bombay Crush, Unicorn. Okay, I know, Bombay Crush, that's it. <laughs> Sold. What are some of the most exciting flavours and ingredients that you're working with at the moment? I find inspiration in literally anything. I've got the Barfi flavour, which is nostalgic of every single function or event you've been to. I've got a chai flavour, which is like a masala chai latte. We've got the Bombay Crutch, which you've just tried, which has the grated jelly in and the basil seeds in as well to give it that proper, authentic flavour. This is amazing. I'm sorry, I'm not listening to you anymore. This is so good. Zakia, what advice do you have for people who want to start and run a successful business? At the end of the day, people will come back for the quality and the service that they will receive. It will be hard work. You will possibly not sell initially and you'd have to keep going back. So determination is also quite important. Zakia, thank you so much for such a sweet treat of a day. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to finish this in the car.